Hi, girls and boys. I'm Lisa Olmstead, and I work in the superintendent's office. So let's read our book. Punishment. I soon, sir, <clears throat> excuse me. I soon learned that humans can screech even louder than monkeys. After that, I was never allowed in the kitchen. Babies. Back in those days, the Big Top Mall was smaller. It had a pony ride, a wooden train that bustled around the parking lot, and a few beraggled parrots and a surly spider monkey. But when Mac brought me a baby gorilla dressed in a crisp tuxedo to the mall, everything changed. People came from far and wide to have their pictures taken with me. They brought me blocks and a toy guitar. They held me in their laps. Once, I even held a baby in mine. She was small and slippery. Bubbles flowed from her lips. She squeezed my fingers. Her rear was puffy with padding. Her legs bowed like bent twigs. I made a face. She made a face. I grunted. She grunted. I was so afraid that she would fall that I squeezed her tightly and her mother yanked her away. I wonder if my mother ever worried about dropping us. We always held on, but that's easier to do when your mother is furry. Human babies are an ugly lot, but their eyes are like our baby's eyes, too big for their faces and for the world. Beds. One day after many weeks of loud talking, Helen packed a bag and slammed the front door and never came back. I don't know why. I never know the why of humans. That night, I slept with Mac in his bed. My old nest were woven of leaves and sticks and shaped like his bathtub. Gr cool green cocoons. Mac's bed, like mine, was flat hot without sticks or stars. Still, he made a sleeping sound like the rumble my father used to make when all was well, a sound from deep inside his belly. My place. Matt grew sullen. I grew bigger because I became what I was meant to be, too large for chains, too strong for hugs, too big for human life. I tried to stay calm, to move with dignity. I did my best to eat daintily but human ways are hard to learn, especially when you're not a human. When I saw my new domain, I was thrilled, and who wouldn't have been? It had no furniture to break, no glasses to smash, no toilets to drop Max keys into. It even had a tire swing. I was relieved to have my own place. Somehow, I didn't realize I'd been here quite so long. Now I drink Pepsi, eat old apples, and watch reruns on TV. But many days I forget what I'm supposed to be. Am I a human? Am I a gorilla? Humans have so many words, more than they truly need. Still, they have no name for what I am. 9,876 days. Ruby is finally asleep. I watched her, her chest rise and fall. Bob, too, is snoring. But my mind is still racing for perhaps the first time ever I've been remembering. It's an odd story to remember, I have to admit. My story has a strange shape a stunted beginning, and an endless middle. I count all the days I've lived with humans. Gorillas count as well as anyone, although it's not a particularly useful skill to have in the wild. I've forgotten so many things, and yet I always know precisely how many days I've been in my domain. I take one of the magic markers Julia gave me. I make a small X on my painted jungle wall. I make more X's and more. I make an X for every day of my life with humans. 
my marks look like this. There's his marks. The rest of the night, I mark the days, and when I'm done, my wall looks like this. And so on, until there are 9,876 X's marching across my wall like a parade of ugly insects. A visit. It's almost morning when I hear steps. It's Mac. He's had a sharp smell. He weaves as he walks. He stands next to my domain. His eyes are red. He's staring out the window at the empty lot. Ivan, my man, he mumbles, Ivan. He presses his forehead against the glass. We've been through a lot, you and me.